Okay, gonna show you that pornography is mind control and it seduces the brain. Okay, gonna show you that from science, but also gonna quote you some scripture. First of all, we're gonna start us off with the Word of God, because the Word of God confirms what science says about pornography and how it seduces and messes up and rewires your neurological health and your brain. Okay, but of course, from the Word of God, first and foremost, Proverbs 27 20. I have two scriptures written down here in my notes. Proverbs 27 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. So when you get into pornography, it is never going to fully satisfy you. You'll get into softcore porn, then you'll get into hardcore porn, then who knows, you might start getting into incest porn, which is actually a thing, bestiality porn, and then you actually pretty soon you're going out and committing all kinds of crimes. You know, pornography is wicked. It, it leaps all kinds of wicked acts. And it's because the eyes of men are never satisfied. Uh, Lamentations 3.51 Mine eye affecteth mine heart because of all the daughters of the city. Pornography will affect your heart. When you set things in front of your eyes, it affects your heart. And when you set pornography in front of your eyes, it's going to affect your heart. It's going to take away desire from your wife. If you're married, it's going to lead you to have all kinds of perverted thoughts. It's going to affect your heart. But now, I'm going to show you from the scientific side of it. Because I'll show you from the Word of God. Well, actually, one, one last verse I forgot to go to. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. Uh, I think it's can't remember the exact verse. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already with her in sorry, with her already in his heart. Okay. Pornography is digital adultery, it's digital fornication, because you're looking upon a woman to lust after her. That is if you're married, then you're looking upon another woman to lust after her, which is adultery in your heart. Got these new blue light glasses, they really help. They cut out the blue light so it helps with eye strain. But yeah, now I'm going to go to the scientific side of it. Forgot to quote that verse in Matthew chapter 5. Seduction of the brain. And they do give, this is from a Christian article, but they do give sources. Uh, where is it? They give sources near the bottom of it. So it does back it up with science. So it says there are a few people to, there are a few people today who would deny that the brain is the primary organ of psychological experience. Uh, while we can debate the place of the soul, the brain's involvement in how we live and have our being is undeniable. The brain is constantly changing in response to what uh, is being is being given to process. The thing these the things we see, smell, taste, hear, touch, and experience throughout the day affect it and modify it. The brain's ability to be modified to learn help us process information and integrate these experience experiences with our memories in order to choose appropriate responses. The brain integrates uh, what is being fed into memories, making making sense of the world and developing our sense of self. If the brain is being fed scripture, it should come as no surprise that it sees the world through the lens of scripture. If it is being fed images of political conspiracies or violence or oops. Sorry about that. Or violent sexuality, it should not come as any surprise that it begins to see the world through a filter of politics, depravity, or sensuality. For some, this view of the brain's role is a relief. It helps them understand depression, anxiety, or addiction as a rewiring problem. It is a fundamental part of how they are put together and can be extraordinary, extraordinarily helpful in understanding why they struggle. Scrolling down. For others, uh, others that knowledge uh, leads for others that knowledge leads to a fatalist view or uh, quote my brain made me do it defense uh, when they sin or act out because the per the human brain is the biological anchor of our psychological experience it is helpful to understand how it operates knowing how it is wired together where it is sensitive and sensitive can help us understand why pornography affects people the way it does the plus plastic plastic City, hope I'm saying that right. Not good at you know reading on a computer. Of the uh, beautiful complex brain uh, can be a blessing or a curse. While the brain is sort of scrolling down, 
While the brain is malleable, it typically follows a set of rules in performing its functions. These rules govern how convictions are made, how images, oops, how images are processed, how behavior, how behaviors are executed, and how emotions are triggered. It is, uh, it is here in some of these circuits that pornography uh, seems to be exploiting how or one of the brains, Achilles' heels, the naked human form. Exactly. Again, your eye affected your heart. The eyes of man are never satisfied. You know, uh, Matthew, I think it's uh, 531. You know, look upon a woman to lust after Or sorry, Matthew 528. Look upon a woman to lust after her adultery in your heart. That's what pornography is. There are a few things in the world that can grab someone's attention. There are a few things in the world that can grab someone's attention, like a naked human body. Uh, and fewer than, or fewer, a fewer still than naked bodies engaged in intimate sexual act. You know some stuff right there. One need to look further, further than the prime time television D DVD series and the most frequently viewed websites uh, to see that a great see that a great amount of time, energy, and resources take advantage of this fact of life. Sexuality and nakedness are used to entice us to watch, buy, and follow, and to arouse us to any number of the other actions. Our sexual nature provides us a powerful impulse that tends to drive us. While it is true that not everyone who looks at sexually explicit images develops an addictive or compulsive patterns of consumption and acting out. It is important to note that these images of nakedness and sexuality uh, tap or tap into a reflective arousal response in, in many men that can lead to devastating outcomes. From time to time, brain scientists can. Oops. From time to time, brain scientists confirm something that we seem to know uh, intuitively. The question is, quote, why do men like looking at porn, unquote. It would seem to be, to be one that common sense and straightforward observation would be sufficient to answer. If, however, one felt the need to actually prove it with the brain imaging technology, such as, as a multimillionaire dollar uh, fMRI machine, then one can be rest assured that there is actual scientific data to make this claim. In a small number of studies where people have held, had their brains imaged while viewing sexually explicit material, the effects on sexual responses have been observed, resulting in several interesting findings. Now on the section of porn in the brain, it should come as no surprise that the majority of pornography viewers are men. Exactly, because you're looking upon a woman to lust after her. Matthew 5.28 the eyes of men are never satisfied. Proverbs uh, twenty seven twenty. Your eye affected your heart. Lamentations three fifty one. And while it is true that women also notice sexual cues in their environment, there seems to be a sensitivity to pornography that many men have built into the neurological wiring. The male brain seems to be built in a way that such visual cues that have sexual reverence, e.g., example given, the naked human, the, the naked female form, solic solicitous facial expressions have a sorry have a hypnotic effect on them when the cures are detected they trigger a cascade of neurological chemical and hormonal events hormonal events uh, in some ways they are like the hit of a drug there is a rush of sexual arousal and energy that accompanies it so basically it's just filling up that lust that lustful thoughts in your neurological wiring that's all it does it's really bad for your neurological health it pushes dopamine to where your brain, because what happens is your brain has dopamine receptors, your body has dopamine receptors, and when there's too much dopamine produced, there's not enough dopamine receptors to handle it, so you just want to get more and more and more and more and more to, to handle all that dopamine, but yet you don't have enough dopamine receptors. Uh, where was I? How a man learns to deal with his energy to form an appropriate response to it is part of becoming a mature adult. The psychological, behavioral, and emotional habits that form our sexual character will be based on decisions we make uh, Yeah, whenever a sequence of arousal and response is activated, it forms a neurological memory that will influence future processing in response to sexual cues. As this pathway becomes activated and traveled, and becomes a preferred route, a mental journey that is regularly trod, the consequences of this are far-reaching. Exactly. I mean, look at Ted Bundy. He's an example. He watched porn, and then he went out and actually physically harmed women. It can lead to all kinds of crime. Another relevant finding by, by those who are conducting, conducting brain research in this area uh, of what are being called minor neurons, these neurons make up a circuit located in the frontal and uh, pure... Parietal 
lobes originating near the top of your head. These neurons are involved with the process of how to mimic beha a behavior. They certain they certain they contain a motor system that correlates to the planning of, out of a behavior. Consider this example: if you see someone grab a hammer and pound on it, the same part of your brain that you would use to actively pound a hammer would be activated. Yeah, makes sense. Um, just scroll down. Other brain regions may hold on, to hold that behavior in check, but now, but you have now uh, have primed a neutral circuit to the hammer on on hammer and nail to hammer and nail. Sorry, these neurons were originally called monkey see monkey do neurons. Uh, they were first discovered in monkeys. They constitute the way we neurologically neurologically learn by observing others. Whenever we see a behavior, there is a silent echo, a neurological mirror. A, of ourselves doing that behavior uh, resides in the brain. Sorry, yeah, it resides in the brain. This is a wonderful thing we can learn by watching others, but it can also have negative effects, especially with respect to pornography. And then you give the source for that one too. These mirrors, uh, these these mirror neurons, uh, are involved with someone who views pornography because they view what they uh, vicariously. What, what they, they view, they vicariously experience and learn from. As men watch the sexually charged scene on screen, they uh, vicariously mirror this, which triggers sexual arousal. The mirror neuron system triggers the arousal, which leads to sexual tension and a need for an outlet. Unfortunately, the reality is that when he acts out, often by masturbating, excuse me, um, this leads to hormonal and neurological consequences, which are designed to bind him to the object he is fo focusing on. In God's plan, this is to be his wife. Exactly. Math again, Matthew 5, 28, you're looking upon a woman to lust after her. You're committing adultery in your heart. But for many men, it is the image on the screen. Pornography thus enslaves the viewer to an image, hijacking the biological response intended to bond a man to his wife, therefore inevitably, not good at reading on a computer, loosening that bond. Uh, but it would be wrong to think that view, that view, to think of viewing pornography as just a simple circuit bomb. The human brain is not like a computer. It is a chemical soup in which it operates and functions. There are hormones of brain chemicals known as neurotransmitters, which provide uh, which provide chemical media uh, the chemical medium for brain activity. Viewing pornography does not just active circuits. It generates feelings intended for sexual uh, longing, desire, love, and romance. It also alters the chemical medium of the entire body in profound ways. These chemicals include neurotransmitters that the brain cells use to communicate with each other, as well as, hor as, well as the hormones the body and the brain produce in response to sexual arousal and sexual activity. And like I said earlier, when you just view it over and over again, you keep wanting more, and then just your eyes are never satisfied. And then your eye eventually affects your heart. Uh, and there's all that down there. I'll keep reading. In men, there are five, this is the big five. In men, there are five noteworthy chemicals involved in sexual arousal and response. Testos testosterone is the male hormone that seems to drive sexual interest. It has long been known as uh, that castrating animals, the removal of testates, produce the majority of testosterone in males. It is an effective way to, dec to, to, uh, decrease, the, to, way to decrease sex drive and castration and also produces the interest in sex in man as well as i.e. eunuchs. Testosterone, testosterone, not good at reading, seems to be an enabler of sex drive and its production is triggered by the brain through, hor for, through a hormonal process which can be adjusted throughout the day in response to what is going on in the environment. When a sexual cue is identified by the brain, a surge of testosterone production is triggered. This testosterone uh, surge heightens sexual anticipation and prepares the body for sexual encounters. What is fascinating is that these cues can be produced by pornography or through sexual fantasize, or fantasizing. Yeah. Uh, so it is not just what you say see that causes the, the uh, testosterone to surge and to increase sexual interest, but it is also what you dwell on that can produce a surge as well. Again, it goes back to the thing. You know, uh, the, my eye effect. You know, my eye effect is my heart. Lamentation three fifty one. So what you dwell on, it will affect your heart. A second player in the in the cava cavalcade. Hope I'm saying that right. Is chemicals of chemicals is dopamine. Exactly. 
Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is known to underline underlie all drugs of addiction. Dopamine seems to play an important role in helping people identify what things in their environment are significant. This chemical is going to be the primary reason why carving or craving occurs. Often, dopamine is referred to as a pleasure chemical. Its levels are increased when we do things that generally perpetuate our lives and the survival of our species. For example, satisfying hunger by eating a meal, satisfying thirst by drinking water, satisfying the sex drive by engaging in intercourse, all are correlated with heightened dopamine levels. External external or internal sexual cues can trigger the release of dopamine in key brain regions that are also sensitive to testosterone. The key element to remember here is that dopamine is directing us towards resolving the tension that is being produced by the sexual images and anticipation of sexual release. It provides the rush that men feel when they view pornography. Exactly, because when you have all this dopamine and, you, and plus you have dopamine receptors, when we don't have enough dopamine receptors, you know, really bad things can happen. It can lead to all kinds of uh, perverted acts. And another neurotransmitter involved in heightening this rush is neuropinephrine. Uh, it has, I hope I'm saying it right, yeah, nor, norpinephrine. I think I say it. Yeah. It has two functions in the development of sexual addictions. First, norpinephrine, norpinephrine is a significant player in promoting, in promoting sexual arousal. It is a cousin to adrenaline chemically. Uh, it has been involved in helping the body prepare for sexual activity. In addition to preparing the body, it also is relying on the brain to remember how the sexual drive is being met. Uh, Norpine frame helps to store helps to store the memories of this event. It should become as no surprise that many men who can't remember what they had for breakfast last week can still remember the image of the first Playboy centerfold centerfold that they ever saw. Norpine frying serves to help store these memories and get these images stuck in the brain. Uh, presumptuously, presumably, they are the memories that that were important to be stored. While dopamine, while dopamine and no pine, no no pine frying. Hope I'm saying that right may provide an immediate rush that men get when viewing porn. The key event to determining whether or not viewing becomes a ha habitual pattern is going to be the release of in endogenous opiates, hope I'm saying it right, produced during sexual release, most notably in response to the orgasm. Many men will report that this experience is accompanied is accompanied accompanied by feelings of transcendence and euphoria that are known to be related to the release of and and endogenous endogenous, hope I'm saying it right, opiates. Opiates. Hope I'm saying these words right. It has been known for decades that the brain produces its own opiates and is involved in pain relief and pleasure. Street drugs such as heroin and medicine, uh, such as uh, street drugs and heroin, such as heroin and medicines such as morphine, can produce feelings of euphoria. Euphoria. Hope I'm saying that word right as well. Uh, and reduce pain. The ability of this orgasm to produce euphoria uh, or release from sexual tension is what provides the psychological reward to the sexual drive. The release of the end, end, endogenous orpates during masturbation or sexual activity with a partner is part of the larger sequence of sexual arousal. In response, viewing pornography provides the stimuli that help prepare the body for sexual response when the viewer sexually acts out, uh, resulting in orgasm resulting in orgasm it gets stored as a behavior that is known to have a significant playoff this this significant playoff uh, is a relief of opiates which provide a chemical substitute for the psychological experience of orgasm 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 i hope i'm saying that right uh i'll just go down there then it goes up how pornography uh, hijacks God's attended pattern of sexual attraction, arousal, and response. Um, viewing pornography for sexual arousal and using it to produce the release of eupora of orgasm uh, provides the merely transit fix of any number of psychological problems, whether it is depression, poor self esteem, anger, or any other number of things that cause a person to feel a need uh, for relief or of relief or release, pornography becomes a part of a ritual that is used to get a short-term fix, like eating candy to satisfy hunger. Pornography 
can feel like a healthy way to satisfy a, the drive for intimacy. In truth, it provides no nourishment whatsoever that results in a greater degree of need. Exactly, because you just because your eyes are never satisfied. You just keep wanting more. You just want to get just, and you get into more hardcore porn. Even in the absence of acting out, the images such as such as a robust salient uh, salient character, they that are stored in, as stored as memories that can produce a warped sense of sexuality and objectification. So that's the end of the article. Well, not the end of it, but that's the end of the part I wanted to read. The bottom line is, is that uh, pornography can mess with your brain. It rewires the brain. It's terrible for your neurological health, and it will never satisfy you. You see, only a wife will satisfy you, you know, your sexual desires. So I wanted to show you guys that pornography is terrible for your neurological and psychological and mental health. So uh, don't get into pornography. It is a wicked sin. Uh, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.